a couple of days ago, just when our uh, Prime Minister visited Mantara, PIB released one document about India's conservation efforts. It's like a compilation of all the important things that happened over the year. And in the entire document, this is the most important thing that you need to know. For the first time ever, see, whenever you have this keyword, first ever, is with respect to our conservation effort, it becomes extremely important. First ever satellite tagging of a Gangetic dolphin. Why is this significant? Why should we care? Okay, what's the context? There is a place, or rather, I would say there is a river called Kulsi River, which is a tributary of Brahmaputra. You would see that in the border between, I mean, this is the basin, complete basin, Assam, basically in Assam. So, catchment area from Meghalaya area and Assam area, in this place, you would see this Kulsi River. Gangetic dolphins were found here. And the first ever satellite tagging of these dolphins was done here. What does this satellite tagging mean? You basically, see, if you observe a uh, Gangetic dolphin, after a point of time, you don't know if we are looking at the same dolphin or not. And this fact is very important because you would not know how many, uh, you know, members of that species are there in that particular area. There's a danger that you might be double counting. What if you use a satellite image and lock? Okay. I am tracking the organism right now. Basically, you're invading their privacy. That's a different thing. Uh, anyway, coming back. <clears throat> this is important for conservation efforts. What are the funding, uh, you know, funding agencies here? Obviously, the ministry. Then you have CAMPA and Wildlife Institute of India with Assam Forest Department. So, every possible stakeholder is there. Okay. What are the purposes? Seasonal movements, migration patterns, habitat, etc. Basically, you are... Dolphins are under surveillance now, not just humans. So what are the features that you need to focus on? Am I expecting you to remember this name, scientific name? No. Important fact is the special trait of echolocation. They're nearly blind. They depend on sound and the echoes that are produced to move, just like bats. Where do you find them? Ganga, Brahmaputra, Meghna, Annapoli and Sangu river systems. You just, you just don't restrict them to Assam only. Animals don't have political boundaries. They have climatic boundaries. Geographical boundaries. So they have land-based restrictions, not political restrictions. So you find them in India, Bangladesh, Nepal. They don't need visa from one place to another place to travel. So right, this be logical in your approach. Conservation status, it's not important to remember whether it is endangered, critically endangered, etc. If it is critically endangered, you can remember, but this is not. Okay. And the important fact is, it is India's aquatic animal and it is declared that way in 2009. Apart from this, you need to know the various types of dolphins across the world. And I'm giving certain facts, not very important per se, but you need to know that the freshwater dolphin in India, the Gangetic dolphin is not the only kind in the world. There are other kinds also. These are the ones. Iravadi dolphin, you also find Iravadi dolphin in India. It is also Indus Valley uh, I mean, sorry, Indus uh, river dolphin also. But the most important one is Gangetic dolphin because of the status that we gave it, National Aquatic Animal. Now, we are focusing on a conservation model just like Project Tiger. We are using the same structure to conserve this because of the status that we have given. We are following the model of Project Tiger. And this is a very latest one, started five years ago in 2020. So these are the things that you need to know. Ecolocation, National Aquatic Animal of India, not the only dolphin species in the world. And we are following Project Tiger. Take 10 seconds, you can write this down. Recently, as in from the past three, four years, there's a debate on uh, developing Andaman and Nicobar Islands as a strategic hub, both for our security purposes or trade purposes. But this is closer to equator. And when you are close, to equator it's obvious that the biodiversity will be very high when that is the case do you have enough environmental impact assessment and other social audits in place to ensure that the local population as well as the flora and fauna are not disturbed it is in this context you need to know some endangered species of the nicobar islands again here i'm not expecting you to remember every name etc but if you have to guess intelligently and smartly, at least you need to be in a position to recognize. So whatever you get from the Hindu, if you just recognize them, they are not going to be like a random bouncer or a surprise. And that is the reason I'm asking all this. You may or may not have this information in other materials, 
but it is immaterial if you can't remember it. I'm not expecting you to remember every detail. You need to have a certain logic. We will focus on those logics in our class. That's why it is important to focus and listen to what we are discussing. Okay. In this entire thing, uh, the most important trend that you need to focus is Nicobar Islands have something very uh, unique. A lot of species are endemic to that region. Meaning, if they are disappearing from Nicobar, they practically vanish from entire face of the earth. It's, that's the danger. There is no replacement for the threats that they're facing. Like if they're, you know, washed out from this region, you can't have them again. And they have a very specific ecological role. No amount of efforts or science can replace a nature-based solution. So it is important to understand this. Okay. And there are a lot of untouched tribes, Jarva, Onge. If these indigenous tribes face a threat of existence, again, it's a humanitarian crisis. Now, see, UPSC is obviously not going to ask you, Nico, is Nicobar Megapod endemic to that area or not? If it is asking, it's a direct no-brainer because the name itself says that it is a endemic species. So you don't have to remember Nicobar tree shoe, Nicobar serpent, Nicobar pig. All these are not important. The names are not important. But what do they do? Like, why is it considered to be so special? Now, this... Megapod, if you disturb the nesting places of that bird, they will just abandon it. And that is a threat to their existence. And then you have tree shrew. Okay. These are related to primates. What are primates, etc. We'll be discussing that in the class today as well. That is one more point. And Nicobar serpent eagle. This is a kind of an eagle. Again, this is endemic to Nicobar. Smallest eagle ever known. That's the point you need to know. Nicobar pig is important for the local communities. Largest wild mammal in Nicobar. Not really important per se, but since this is given in the newspaper articles, I just listed it down. But the most ignored one is the saltwater crocodile, which is the apex predator. Like if you want to maintain balance in that ecosystem, you need to have a predator. Otherwise, if there is a herbivore in that system, they continuously feed on, they reproduce and they continuously feed on the you know vegetation in that region, which will cause an imbalance. So as a system... To fix that problem, every ecosystem will have a predator. And that predator is saltwater crocodile. They will face an extinction. So, you are seeing, if you look at the entire system, it's well organized. Every species has its own role. And once human beings enter there, we are actually disrupting the entire ecological system. That's the danger. Where else will you find saltwater crocodile in India? This can be a question. So, you do your research here. Just be curious about where will you find saltwater crocodile. I can give you the answer. But if you are curious and if you search for it, it is going to stick in your mind. Just note this task down. Then you have the Omura's whale. You don't have data on this actually. But this whale is cited only in this region. Despite the lack of you know data on this, instead of you know trying to study more about this, we are going ahead with the project without a proper environmental impact assessment. That can also be a question. Next up, in Orissa, you will see some black tigers, famous black tigers. And state government... Because this is uh, uh, a rare thing, they're trying to create a safari and raise some revenue there. That's the context. Simlipal, Odisha Simlipal Tiger Reserve. Can anyone tell me if you are following my channel regularly? I just want to know. I'm just curious if someone is reading the channel or also the documents that I'm giving you. What is the most famous tree here in Simlipal? Okay, I guess some of you are already searching it on google sir is it red silk cotton tree? sorry red silk cotton tree yeah it's also called uh, i'm not palace tree you know the famous battle of plassey it's basically because of the palace tree in that region nepal has a lot of palace tree the pal here is related to palash okay and battle of plassey because the britishers couldn't pronounce it they made palash as plassey so that region in Bihar also had, like, the point that I'm trying to make is trees, flora and fauna do not have political boundaries. Just because you say that they are found in only in Odisha, it doesn't mean they can't be found in Bihar. Palace trees are also found in Bihar. And that region had a lot of palace trees and that's the reason why it's called Battle Plus. Similarly, Pal. Anyway, coming back. Okay. So there is a rare black tiger, genetic variant of the Bengal tiger. Okay. So... Why is this black tiger found or what is the reason behind it? There's a mechanism called melanism. Melanin is produced and this will make the skin darker. It's 
present even in human beings. Pseudo melanism is where tiger stripes are denser and more interspersed, making the tiger appear darker but not fully black. There is a gene, specific gene. I don't think UPSC will expect you to remember this, but just in case, this specific gene is affecting the coat pattern only. And that's the reason it is called pseudo melanism. They are not actually melanistic types. What you find in Odisha. Some yellow part is also retained by these tigers. And since these are rare, Odisha government is planning a safari. What are the mistakes that most people do? They think that Simlipal is a home for melanistic leopards. No, pseudo melanistic tigers, not leopards. Are leopards found in India? What are the big cats? I gave you in your previous document. How many of you studied? Okay, you can go through the previous documents. I've already given it there. There is one ant which is moving around using polarized moonlight. Now, why are we studying all this random stuff? You might be wondering. Because UPSC has a tendency to ask questions on behavioral patterns. So, many insects use the moon position to navigate in the dark night. So, recently, scientists found to nocturnal. What do you mean by nocturnal? So, Awake in the night. Yeah. They are active during the nights. They are active during the nights. So, obviously, since they are active in the night, that is why they are using the moon position. It's obvious, right? So, the thing is, whenever there are clouds, Whenever there are, you know, the new moon phase, when the light is dim, these animals have some trouble. But unlike the normal insects, these two bull ant species, you know, even the polarized moonlight, even in the dimmer version of that light, they're able to move, which gives us new insights on animal behavior. This can be a question. That's the reason. And why is it important? Because I told you, right, whenever there is a past ever keyword, it can be asked in UPSC. Just recognizing it will not harm you, right? So just being aware of it will not harm you. This is the fact. Is this the first insect or first animal? No. There is already one, which is dung beetle. So even when the moon is not directly visible, ants can still determine where they are and move accordingly. Animal navigation patterns have been uh, a theme that UPSC had been picking on. And that's the reason I'm giving you this. But moving on. 